this video is a little bit more technical, so take your time. In order to install our water block, we will need to replace our double deck video plate to a single deck video plate and remove the GPU's backplate to have direct access to its logic board. To do so, we are going to remove the 14 screws which holds both backplate to our video card. A half millimeter Phillips screwdriver will help us doing that. In addition, we will have to remove two screws with a one millimeter head Phillips screwdriver. And here is our logic board. And before attempting to separate it from its stock cooler, make sure to have the right kind of tool to remove M2.5 hex bolts. There are 14 of them to remove. Go slow and make sure not to make any kind of damages or scratch on the logic board itself. Now, worth noting, if you wanted to backtrack at any time of the build, this is the right time. Once you have removed those four screws, and particularly this one, your warranty will be cancelled and void. And for these screws, any 2mm head Phillips screwdriver will do the trick. All right, and finally, before removing the stock cooler, we have to remove those two screws from the output plate. I cannot stress this enough. If this is your first time, go slow, very slow. The stock cooler will not come off right away. You'll need to apply some gentle and progressive force. Don't snap it out. Also, keep in mind that a couple of plugs still need to be removed from the logic board before removing the stock cooler. And again, be very gentle when removing the plugs, especially the white one. You want to hold the base with your thumb when you're trying to unplug it. The second plug is much easier to remove. Gently pull on it and it should come right out. And here it is, our no longer warranted GTX 1080 Ti. So now let's move on to installing the water block. For this build, I went for the EKWB 1080 Ti water block. But worth noting, the 1080 Ti logic board is compatible with the Titan X Pascal water blocks as well. In our box, we will find our usual screws, cooling pads, and freeze it right here. A single slot video output plate. I think this is a small innovation worth noting, and I hope I'll see many more of it in the future. All right, let's continue and take a closer look to our water block. Let me unpack it and clean our workstation a little. So what does it look like exactly? Here is the GPU side, the lateral side and the plexi side. And before anything else, we are going to take our single slot plate and replace the original double slot plate which is on our card. Just remove the three screws and the original plate should come right off. Take the same screws and simply screw back the single slot plate. There, much better. Back on our logic board for some cleaning. All the components marked in red on your screen needs to be thoroughly cleaned before doing anything else. I usually use a wet Q-tip to remove all the reminiscent of the original thermo compound which came with the card. And for the other components, simply remove the remaining original thermo pads. Our next step will be to put in place all the thermo pads on our logic board. And in blue, all the components which will require a thermo pad cover. Here, I will start with individual thermopads, which we will use for our RAM memory modules. There is really not much to it, simply follow the instructions on your screen. Go slow and make sure that the entire surface of the concerned component is covered by its thermopad. It's not as easy as it seems. And for larger components, do not hesitate to use scissors and to cut through them to uh, achieve that perfect fit we're looking for. If you take a look at the instructions provided with the water block, you'll realize that I'm covering a little bit more components than necessary. And I'm doing this in the hope that I'll be able to save a fraction of degrees Celsius here and there. But you don't have to, so don't let this be a source of confusion.
Next, we are going to put our thermal compound on our GPU and remove the adhesive film protecting our thermal pads. And here, the moment of truth. We are going to put in place our water block. The logic board components will guide where your water block should be. So just follow the steps on your screen and go slowly. Ever carefully, we are going to turn the GPU on its face and secure the water block to the logic board with the provided screws. Here we are going to add another couple of screws and the reason why the rest of the screws are left empty is for the backplate installation. I'll get to that later. And finally, we are going to add two longer screws to finalize the securing of our logic board to our water block. Note that one of the screws will be secured in place with a provided knot. It is time to verify that our installation so far makes sense. It is important to verify that your thermal pads and the water block have achieved a full surface contact. So please make sure to double check on your own build the blue sections shown on your screen. The backplate. And for this example, I am using a Titan X backplate, which I had laying around. And normally it is compatible. All right, let's go ahead with putting some thermal pads on the backplate as shown on your screen. Make sure not to forget any of the spots that I am covering. And since there are only two of them, I trust that you will not. On the other side of our logic board, we still have to cover the RAM soldering point with individual thermal pads. The tricky part here is to get all the soldering points covered by the individual pads, and it's not that easy. And now the exciting task to remove every protecting adhesive film from every thermal pad, and thus both on the backplate and the thermal pad. Maybe this is the right time to let you know that backplate installation are only optional. They're only here to increase your thermal dissipation, uh, one water cooling a video card, but it is not mandatory. All right, so as shown on your screen, place your backplate in place and secure it using those four screws. As you might have noticed and rightfully wonder, I chose to ignore those two last screws on the left simply because the Titan X backplate do not have any match on the logic board. But I have absolutely no doubt that those four primary screws will be more than enough to keep a tight pressure on our thermal pads and the backplate. Finally, we are going to install this video card on our motherboard. We will be positioning our GPU on the first slot of our motherboard simply because it is the only one which will run up to 16 bus speed, therefore giving us the very best possible performances for this particular video card. If you made it that far, then this stage is pretty easy and there is really not much to it. So enjoy the rest of the video. Next up, the tubing. <laughs> 